This morning our scripture reading is going to come from the book of Ephesians, chapter 3, verses 14 through 21. And I know some of you like to follow along in your Bibles. I will be quoting during today's message from the book of John and also from 1 John, from his, from his letter. But for right now, this is Ephesians 3, 14 through 21, and this is Paul writing to the people at Ephesus. He says, For this reason I kneel before the Father, for whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with the power through his Spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you were being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all of the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long, how high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know that this love surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably, immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us. To him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all the generations, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We are continuing our sermon series this morning loosely following up the Geared Up for Life series based on the book of Ephesians. And you know, as I, uh, the more I read Paul, the more I, we already know he's a great letter writer. His, his, his letter writing style is, is wonderful. But as I read these letters, I become more and more aware of just how powerful a man of prayer that Paul was. Throughout his epistles, you'll find numerous places where he writes prayers for other people and lifts them up. And in today's scripture, we have one such prayer. Before I begin this morning, I'd like to share a story with you that I came across while I was preparing for this message. It seems that a very young boy heard the news that his father had just been promoted to Brigadier General in the service. Boy thought about that for a moment. He looked up at his mom and he says, Mom, do you think he'll still mind if I call him daddy? Do you think it's okay for me to call him daddy? In last week's message from Ephesians chapter 2, Paul reminds us that Christ's great sacrifice for us and how that through that sacrifice, we have unrestricted access to God. And while my source didn't, didn't tell me the mother's answer, I'm pretty sure that the little boy was able to continue to call his brigadier general father, daddy. And I say that because to this day, I still call my Air Force captain father, dad. The child still has access to his daddy. Picking up from last week's scripture, just before the reading of the day, Paul begins this chapter in Ephesians, telling the, telling the people in Ephesus, he says, For this reason, I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus for the sake of you Gentiles, became a servant of this gospel by the gift of God's grace given me, through the working of his power. Although I am less than the least of all God's people, this grace was given to me to preach to the Gentiles the boomless riches of Christ and to make plain to everyone the administration of this mystery, which for ages past was kept hidden in God who created all things. See, he again reemphasizes his point because of the work of Christ Jesus. He says, in him and through faith in him, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. I ask you therefore not to be discouraged because of my sufferings for you, which are your glory. That little 
boy can still approach his daddy. Just as we can still approach our Heavenly Father because of the work and the sacrifice that Jesus made for us. And then we get to the point in the letter that is today's scripture reading. And so Paul is making a prayer for the people of Ephesus, and he's going to make three requests or three intercessions. The first one is, he says, I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. He is praying for God to give the people of Ephesus strength through the Holy Spirit, power through the Holy Spirit, so that they can face the challenges that are in front of them now at the time of the letter and the challenges that they're going to be facing in the future. I saw one translation of this verse that I like. It says, I pray a mighty increase of strength by his spirit in the inner man. Paul recognizes that God has given him the strength to carry on in face of incredible difficulty. And if you look and follow the, the story of Paul after his conversion, you'll see life was not easy for him. Now, he also realizes that his days on earth at the time of writing this letter are very nearly coming to an end. But because of his inner strength given to him by the Spirit, he's not sitting there worrying about himself and moping and pouting that the end is near. Instead, he is writing a long letter to the people that he spent three years with in Ephesus, people that he loved, and he's praying for them, and he's letting them know that he's praying for them. He's praying for the strength of God through the Holy Spirit to be given to them. And if you go through many of Paul's letters, you'll see that he makes other prayers for other people. One of my favorite quotes from him comes from the book of Philippians when he says, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. That's a verse that I lean on in troubled times. I'd like to share another story with you, another illustration that I found in one of S.C. E. Stone's commentaries. It concerns New York City, where I've never been, but... At the time, they were getting ready to build a bridge, one of the bridges across the East River, and they had started construction on it, only to find that there was a sunken barge right in the way. And it's been there a long time, and it's sunk deep down into the mud of the river. And so they bring out powerful engines and big tugboats and that type of thing, and they try to pull this barge up to get it out of their way. And nothing that they're doing is working. So then a young hotshot kid who's just graduated tech school says he has an idea. And they're desperate enough to let the kid try his idea. So what he did is he had the biggest barge that he could find towed out to the spot. And they attached cables from, from the barge to the sunken one. And they did this at low tide. And then the barge just sat there and waited for the tide to come in. And as the tide come in and the water lifted up on the barge, it slowly worked to release the barge that was beneath it and lifted it up. You see, that young engineer had linked his task, his job to the almost limitless power of the ocean tide. Likewise, we have the infinite power of God available to help us. Paul wrote that this mighty power of God comes to us through the Holy Spirit. This power can help us on difficult days. It can help us when all seems lost. It can help us when we're hurting, when we feel hopeless. We can call on Him. And with his power, he can help us overcome the difficulties that we are facing. That same power can help us overcome temptations when the evil one comes calling. My friends, the power of God knows no limits. So as we continue looking at, at Paul's prayers for the Ephesians, 
He next prays for Christ's presence to be with him, for the presence of Christ to be with him. He says, I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with the power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. So Paul is praying for Christ's presence to be with them. And if you uh, said I was going to quote the apostle John, John also shares where Jesus gives this comforting message. In John, it's chapter 14, starting at verse 15. Jesus says to his disciples, If you love me, keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Our faith allows Jesus' entrance into our lives. And over time, as we serve him, that faith can grow stronger and stronger and stronger. We grow to be more Christ-like as we continue to serve him. Theologians have a fancy term for that. They call it sanctifying grace. It's this grace is a process of a journey, of a believer's continual journey towards holiness. Some, some theologians call it perfecting grace because we become more and more and more like Christ. That doesn't mean we're ever going to be perfect, okay? But it means that we're working to be more and more like Christ. Paul wants the Ephesians to understand that Jesus will always be with them, even though he, Paul, is not going to be with them for much longer. And finally, the third intercession that Paul prays is for the Ephesians to understand how much they are loved. How much they're loved. He says, and I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power, together with all the Lord's holy people, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know that this love surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. We need to be rooted and grounded in Christ's love. He showed his love for us by the sacrifice on the cross. And that love can be a constant. Sorry about that. That love, that love continues to flow and it can be a constant supply within us when we trust in the Lord. Something that we can draw upon when we need to. The Apostle John also makes a similar point in his first letter in chapter 4. When he testifies this, he says, And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to be Savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in them, and they in God. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God, and God in them. This is how love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love. Because first, he loved us. Amen. Paul wrote this letter that we're studying over these weeks to the people at Ephesus. But he knew that this letter was going to be copied and it was going to be sent to all the other churches. He knew that in time, most of the Christians of that day would see these words. 
So he's writing this letter not only for the people of Ephesus, but for all of the Christians of his day and all of the Christians that are going to follow. And that includes us here today. This is where we get the power and the strength to be able to overcome the obstacles in our lives. To share the love of Christ by reaching out to others that are still hurting around us. This power is available to all of you right now. It's within you. The Spirit is there and the power is available. As I get ready to close, I just want to say that we are called to be rooted and to be grounded in love. And ultimately, we're to share that love with everyone that we encounter. I close with one other illustrative story that I came across that was just, it's just too good. I couldn't, couldn't not tell this one. There's a story of a young man who was a Bible student, possibly a seminary. And this young man is being assailed by an atheist. True story. The atheist comes up to him and he says, I don't understand how the blood of Jesus Christ can wash away my sin, nor do I believe it. And the young Bible student thought about this for just a second. And then he tells the atheist, he said, well, you and St. Paul, both agree on that. And it's kind of surprised the atheist. What do you mean? And so the Bible student said, get a Bible, open it up to the first chapter in 1 Corinthians and read verse 18. Which says, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. The atheist looked startled. And in time, he began to study the Bible. For he soon found that the cross was the power of God for his salvation. Praise be to God. Thank you for the strength of that student to stand up and to share. And my friends, I have one simple prayer for all of us this week. I pray that we all have the opportunity to share the love of Christ Jesus with someone who doesn't know it. I pray that we all have that opportunity this week. And on that, I'll simply say amen and amen.